download our Revise It Right revision app for hundreds of videos, quizzes, exam questions, tutor support and so much more. This video is about plant diseases and defence. Now plant diseases can be caused by a range of different things. Uh, first of all is a pathogen, they can be caused by pests and they can also uh, be caused by iron deficiencies and we're going to look at those individually now. Uh, so there, first of all there are a variety of plant pathogens that we need to learn and be aware of and actually if you go back to the communicable disease video we have already talked about these so I'll talk about them again briefly. We've got tobacco uh, mosaic virus which is of course a virus and this is uh, mosaic patterns on the leaf of plants. We've also uh, got rose black spot which is of course a fungal disease. Okay, so these are the ones that we've learned about, these are the ones that we need to know. Okay, so there are a variety of different plant pathogens, for example, tobacco mosaic virus and rose black spot. Uh, for more information on these, go back to our communicable disease video uh, to learn more. So some plant diseases are also a result of mineral deficiencies, or ion, mineral ion deficiencies in the soil that surrounds the plant. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is a nitrate ion deficiency. And this is when the uh, plant does not get as much nitrate ions as it needs. Now, nitrate ions are needed to make protein and therefore important for growth. So therefore we can say a lack of nitrate ions or a nitrate ion deficiency causes stunted growth. Okay, so you remember that nitrate ions are used to make proteins, therefore a lack of nitrate ions is going to lead to stunted growth. So nitrate ion deficiency causes stunted growth. Now magnesium ion deficiency you also need to learn about. Now magnesium ions are needed to make chlorophyll. Okay, so we'll put here that they're needed to make chlorophyll. Now as we know chlorophyll is what absorbs the light for photosynthesis and therefore it's very very important for photosynthesis to take place that the plant has chlorophyll. Plants without enough magnesium cannot make enough chlorophyll. Okay so the issue around this is that the plant cannot make enough chlorophyll. And therefore, it's going to lead to um, a lack of photosynthesis. And therefore, if that glucose isn't being made, then respiration can't take place in the plant. And therefore, again, it can lead to uh, stunted growth. Okay, another symptom of this is discoloration of leaves. So turning the leaves yellow. Okay, so yellow leaves. Okay, so just to quickly sum up that, you have nitrate ion deficiencies which causes stunted growth as nitrate ions are needed to make protein and magnesium ion deficiency which leads to uh, the plant not being able to make enough chlorophyll and we know that chlorophyll is needed for to absorb the light for photosynthesis so therefore again that can lead to stunted growth and yellow leaves. Now as well as pathogens and from ion deficiencies, plants can also uh, be damaged by infestation with pests. Okay, different pests and different insects can damage and uh, destroy plants. And one in particular is the aphid. Okay, now the aphid um, feeds on the phloem. Okay, now we know, hopefully remember, that the phloem is, is where the glucose, where the sugars moves around the plant. So if it's feeding on the phloem, it's essentially feeding on the glucose in the plant. Now we know that that glucose is really, really important for respiration. And therefore, if the plant has not got enough glucose because the aphid is feeding on it, then this is going to affect how much the plant can respire, therefore how much energy it has, and therefore it's going to affect things like growth. So again, this can lead to stunted growth. Okay, so an aphid is an, an example of an insect that damages plants like by feeding on the phloem. 
and therefore feeding on the glucose, which is going to affect the respiration of the plant. Remember to download our Revise It Right Revision app, watch over 700 videos, answer 4,000 plus quiz questions, over 1,000 flashcards, 1,000 exam questions, worksheets, forums, and get help from qualified teachers and so much more. The link is in the description. Now this topic here is for hire only, uh, so if you're foundation you do not have to watch this next part. But it's important that the sooner the disease can be detected in plants, the more likely it is to be treated effectively. And therefore we need to be able to identify the common signs of plant disease. So we're going to go through a list now. So here is the common signs of plant diseases. And one we've talked about a lot already is stunted growth. So if you're noticing that your plants have stunted growth, then that is a sign of some form of plant disease. Uh, spots on leaves is also another sign of disease. Uh, patches of decay or rot. Ab abnormal growths on the plant, i.e. lumps. Uh, a malformed stem or leaf, and also discoloration. Uh, this is a very common one, um, as we saw with the uh, magnesium iron deficiency. It could lead to the plant or the leaves going turning yellow, which is a discoloration. Yeah, so these are things here. These are signs that we need to look out for in order to treat the plants effectively. Now we've got these common signs and as you can see because they're quite common it could therefore be hard to identify what disease the plant has. So there's a number of things that uh, plant owners can do in order to identify what disease uh, their plant has and again this is a higher only uh, so if you're not higher you do not have to know this. Okay so one way is looking in a gardening manual. Okay, so these garden manuals or a gardening website contain lots of examples of plant disease and the common symptoms of each of those diseases. So checking the plant symptoms against uh, the gardening manual is one way to identify what disease is affecting the plant. Uh, another is taking the plant to a lab, a laboratory, uh, where scientists can identify the pathogen. Okay, so where scientists can identify the pathogen. Right, and finally, uh, we can use a test kit. Uh, now these test kits may contain monoclonal antibodies, uh, as we learned about in the previous video, that will attach to a specific antigen. So therefore you can uh, use it to monitor and research what particular disease the plant has. Okay, so these are three ways you need to know of how to identify different plant diseases. So a garden manual or website, taking it to a lab and a test kit. Now, just like humans, uh, because they're affected by so many different types of disease, plants have evolved many, many ways to protect themselves and defend themselves against all of these potential diseases and pests. And we're gonna take you through them now, okay? So the physical uh, defenses uh, that plants have is that most plant leaves and stems have something called a waxy cuticle. Okay, now this provides a, a barrier to uh, sort of stop pathogens from entering. So it kind of acts like our skin does for us, acts as a barrier. So that's a waxy cuticle. Uh, as we know, plant cells also are surrounded by cell walls. Okay, and we know and we'll hopefully remember that these are made of cellulose. Okay, uh, again, these often form a physical barrier against the pathogens. And uh, the final physical barrier, uh, physical defense we're going to talk about is that layer of dead cells uh, that a lot of plants, uh, plants have around their stem. Uh, for example, we're talking about bark on trees. Again, that is a nice physical barrier that, that prevents pathogens from entering the plant. Uh, so as well as physical defences, plants also have chemical uh, defences as well. So some, uh, for example, produce poisons 
okay, which can, uh, if eaten by a herbivore, um, then it can uh, kill or, or be deadly to the herbivore. And therefore, the herbivores are going to very quickly learn that they cannot eat that particular plant. And also, uh, some plants also produce an antibacterial chemical. Okay, an antibacterial chemical that obviously kill uh, bacteria. Okay, so they're the two chemical uh, adaptations or defences that plants have. And as well as the final thing we need to talk about is sort of mechanical uh, defences that some plants have. Uh, so for example, thorns or hairs. Uh, these are really good ways to stop, again, to stop um, herbivores or animals eating the plant. It makes it uncomfortable um, to eat. Um, a, a second one is uh, plants drooping or curling. Uh, now this is really important uh, because again it prevents herbivores from eating the plant as essentially they look un make the plant look unwell um, and dead. So the animal will avoid eating the plant. And finally, uh, some plants can mimic uh, other plants or other organisms. Um, so again, it's a really, really good way um, to defend against particular disease okay, so they can perhaps mimic a dead plant uh, and therefore again a herbivore will not eat uh, that plant so these all of these are ways that the plant has sort of adapted to protect against disease um, and there's lots here to remember so if you need to uh, do pause the video and take a bit more of a look at these so that was quite a long video with lots of information there. So do make sure you have a go at these summary questions to really check your understanding. So pause the video now to have a go. Okay, so question one, how can aphids affect plants? Well, remember that aphids are feed on the phloem and therefore feed on the glucose uh, in the plant. And therefore that's gonna have a, an effect on the uh, respiration and therefore the growth of the plant. Uh, question two, what will happen if there is a nitrate deficiency in the soil? Well, remember that nitrate ions are used to make protein and therefore um, it could cause a nitrate ion deficiency would cause stunted growth. Uh, what happens if a plant does not get enough magnesium ions from the soil? Well, that means the plant uh, can not make enough chlorophyll. So a plant will not make enough chlorophyll and therefore um, it's going to affect the amount of light uh, absorbed for photosynthesis which is going to have that knock-on effect where it's going to affect the plant in terms of uh, stunted growth and also turning leaves yellow. Uh, give two ways diseases can be identified in plants. Uh, well, you've got the uh, gardening manual. Okay, is, is one we can talk about. Uh, we can also about taking it to a lab for scientists to study. And uh, it only asks for two, but the third you could have talked about is a testing kit uh, that uh, has monoclonal antibodies. Uh, give two chemical barriers that protect against disease. And uh, so one you could have talked about is poisons and the other is the antibacterial chemicals that obviously uh, destroy bacteria. And finally, give three mechanical defences of plants. Uh, so one would be thorns, okay? Another would be drooping or curling, and a third would be mimicry, i.e. mimicking um, different organisms. So there was a lot to take in there. Uh, there was plenty of questions to have a go on the website to really test your understanding on this topic, as well as that there are plenty more exam questions as well. And as ever, if there's anything you didn't understand, then please do get into contact with one of our tutors who will happily help.